Hello, uh, this is Demon Gun with Virtual Tabletop Journey. Uh, and more than anything, I'm trying to record some stuff um, so that I remember how I did this stuff later. So today I'd like to just do a really brief tutorial on atmospheric markers. Uh, so atmospheric markers are a way to configure some presets in regards to sound uh, and lighting, such that at any point you can just click a button and it applies them all. So when I'm writing a scene, I generally start with the goals that I have for the scene, the things that I want to have happen, uh, and then I also focus on the sights and sound of a scene. So in this particular scene, we're going to have a group of adventurers who come across this mill. A portion of the mill has fallen into the earth uh, down a pit where there's a monastery with some baddies down there. And so the initial scene here is going to be a little bit of investigation. Uh, I don't want it to be too um, crazy quite yet because uh, I want to ramp up that tension before they're, you know, peering down the hole over here. So over here on the left is your atmospheric settings. Uh, if you don't see this button, um, click spacebar and it'll open this for you. So there are some presets. There's the preset, you know, there's darkness, there's your daylight, which is more or less some up and down uh, sunlight. And then there's some uh, audio options too. So uh, to start the scene, uh, I think what I want to do is, uh, the shadow is almost pretty good here. I think they're gonna get here closer to noon than this. So I'll do like kind of this number here uh, and I'll move, I'll kind of angle it just to add some dynamic, um, make it a little, more, a little more dynamic. And for the ambience, I kind of want to have it, have that chill Diablo feel to it. Um, so, what are my options here in audio? Windy Autumn Field. All right, it's okay. I'll, we're assuming that this mill's kind of abandoned out in the middle of nowhere if we're going with this audio versus being in the middle of a town. For the music, I think it's Blood Harvest was kind of a stringy one, but I don't want it to drown me out. Yeah, that feels pretty good. So, uh, this is a good opening to a scene where you describe to the, to the characters, you know, you see this abandoned mill, um, what do you want to do? And then they're probably going to investigate it. So uh, this button here will create a GM block from these settings. Uh, I don't know what the post effects are. So and this is versus apply to game boards. So I'm going to make this. Uh, it switches me to the GM uh, marker view. I, think it's, I don't know what this view is necessarily called down here. Um, and I'm just going to drop it right here. And so, and then I hit save and close. And then I can close all that. I hit tab. So now, once the, the game starts uh, and the, the players arrive here, I can hit tab, bam, bam, and it'll apply it. And I think if you apply it, it will restart your music, just uh, so you know. So now, we'll say that they've... Um, They've explored a little bit. Now they're over here by this, by the cave entrance, and uh, a little bit of time has passed, just a little bit. So I'm gonna, you know, add a couple hours here. Maybe they like were super paranoid and went back to town to get some supplies, get some rope before they go down this hole. Now I want the shadow to actually cover the hole and make it a little, a little scarier. Um, I'll keep the. Actually, at this point, I'm gonna like silence the music. It'll just be the wind. Uh, and so make an environmental marker for it, drop it there, save it, close this out. So now I can very quickly alternate be between these two. Boom. Okay, you can see our shadows are different here and our music starts. Boom. Our shadows longer and the music stops. Now once they go down into uh, this chamber down here I want it to be totally dark and it's not because you know I mean maybe enough time has passed that um, the Sun is actually down but more than anything I want their light sources and stuff to be needed when they're down here so for that um, I just go here I'm gonna go to the um, to the darkness uh, I want to do some kind of creepy ambient so haunted castle and then the music, what do we got here? Dark Rituals. And then you gotta kind of wait a moment for that to kick in. 
or maybe I'd cramp, crank up the ambient volume at this point. I don't know. Let's see if it'll, if the music will kick in. Is it just really quiet? Oh, yeah, there it is. It's there, but it's quiet. Maybe Dark Rituals is not the way to go. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. So we've got a darkness. I want a very quick way to bam, come back to this preset because I worked on it for a long time and it's super cool. Um, and I'm going to apply it to the game board. So now, uh, if I actually go upstairs, you know, it is actually dark up here. Um, but I'm just going to use that for effect uh, down in this chamber. Uh, and so there you have it. A very quick way to switch between um, between your environments. I imagine you could do things like create storms, uh, things like that for weather. You might have a you might have a whole lineup of these little guys, um, uh, just on the side of your board. Depending on if you're doing like a um, you know a more of an exploration or traveling game, you have like a a random encounter board where you can just you know okay, what time is it when they arrive there, and bam, hit it. Um, See, there's a lot of opportunity here uh, to make your games, um, make your games pop and kind of come alive. Uh, so anyway, that's my super brief tutorial on environmental markers. I hope that helps you create uh, more dynamic and exciting games. Uh, again, I'm Demon Gun at Virtual Tabletop Journey. Um, see you next time.